All right, so here we go. So uh, welcome to the uh, February 2019 um, webinar. And, and this class is really going to like jump into the middle of what we're doing. So Madison, I don't know where you are. And Dennis, and I, I don't know where you are. But, but the other people that are on that have been here for a while, this is a class more designed for them because it's a class to go into. Um, it's going to be a shift the way that we see um, how uh, how to release the body. Okay, and I'm, and uh, we're, we're going to start out with um, a little philosophy before I always get going. Here we go. That's still going. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Great. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. So. So for um, if you just take a look at this picture. I posted this picture. This is a, a young gentleman who's 24 years old. He has, um, uh, he came in for uh, scoliosis. That's what, really what he came for is um, he was referred by uh, a chiropractor that does scoliosis stuff. And uh, since I'm in town, he sent them to me based on the work that I do. And um, the, 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 the young fellow has an interesting history. He's got um, a uh, frontal lobe that is not fully developed. So I'd like to say he's like an eight-year-old, a 10-year-old, um, but he, do, he, he can be like a 15-year-old, but he, you, you can't have a full conversation with him because it's hard for him to get the information, what you're saying in all the time. Um, but he's totally present. And when I first met him, he really was not engaged at all. He was very distant and so forth and so on. Um, he told me he had right hip pain, his parents did. And, uh, and uh, you could kind of see, see what's going on, man. You, if, as a chiropractor, um, we would look at this and go, wow. And, and we would talk about, you know, what do you see here? And, and what we would see is, you know, people would say, oh, he's got a low hip and he's got the big bend in there. And, and some people would look at other pictures and say, oh, he's got degeneration here. And, and we'd measure stuff and all this kind of stuff. And there's a lot of stuff to see here. You could look at the ileum and see that the right ileum is wider. So it's, it's rotated posterior. And we can measure all that stuff. And we can measure this from a Gonstead perspective from a, a Logan perspective all the way up to an upper cervical perspective and, and everywhere in between using just the full spine um, uh, technique of analysis, okay? We could look at this and lay somebody down and we can look at their leg and you go, wow, you know, they, somebody has a short leg and we can record that. We can um, take a um, NCM or a thermometer and run it up and we'd go, wow, man, this person has a pattern. And of course it has a pattern because everything about the universe is a pattern. And this person has a pattern and it's giving off some heat signal based on, you know, the body's ability to try to hold it up and all the muscle activity and the sympathetics and everything else that's cooking here. And there's certainly a lot cooking. Okay. So that's what, does anybody else see anything else that they want to point out? You could say, well, the chin is down. Wow. The, 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 by the way, the young fella couldn't even, he couldn't lift his head up. That's why his jaw is so down. Um, I didn't bring the sagittal, but, you know, he's just really compressed. He also had breathing problems. Okay, also had breathing problems. So what else as a chiropractor? We've got, you know, eight, ten chiropractors on. And as a chiropractor, what, what else do you see here? Left head tilt, right at, you know, atlas down left or, or upright. Right. Uh, shoulder low. Right. Um, scoliosis. Yeah. Scoliosis. Okay. And we could, and we can measure all that. Okay. So, <laughs> and that is exactly um, going to be my point today for just a moment. Cause I'm, I'm going to talk about, I like to talk about 15 minutes of, of, uh, of uh, kind of what I see as a, in a global way and some kind of uh, philosophy because I'm very straight chiropractic based. Um, I believe that we came into this world uh, with everything that we need in the greatest 
thing on the planet, and we have not done it justice at any level in any therapy, in any diagnostics of it, to do anything more than one thing. Notice what is happening. Notice what is happening. Okay? And, and, and tonight, and I'm not going to really get into it in detail because it's not the purpose of this webinar, but in the class that's going to be coming up is to be able to look at this thing and say, hey, this isn't just a story of, of um, you know, it's, it's not a bone out of place. It's a story of, a, a, of a, an intelligence that's in trouble, and it is trying to do everything that it can to hold itself upright. And it's trying to hold itself upright using the least amount of energy available to it. Okay. And, and that's what I see here. Okay. So as chiropractors, I believe it's time that we stop looking at just what is and trying to understand what's happening. Okay. Because without understanding what's happening, we're, we're going to be no different than um, our counterparts that are saying, hey, look at, because um, somebody else would look at this and say, you know, at an MRI and they can, you know, look at, at, at you know, at blood function and they can say there's blood pressure issues because it's body. They could, they can measure other, all these other things based on what they like to look at. You know, I, 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 I once noticed that if you hired a brick person, a mason to build your house, you're going to get a, a, either at a brick or stone. If you, if you hire a carpenter, you're going to get it out of wood. So, so the chiropractor looks at this and really talks about the spine and the bony structure and the medical model wouldn't even do that. They would give somebody some painkillers and if it got worse, they would start noticing the arthritic conditions in it and so forth. And, and then it would be a time for either surgery or a replacement or, or that kind of stuff. And all of us would agree that we see that the person's in trouble. Okay, and my contention is, is that we have to start looking at what's going on here because the only thing we do is notice what's happening as this thing is breaking down over time. And if you come back in five years, you can notice bigger breakdown based on maybe more trauma or as somebody gets older, you know, we get weaker. So the body is going to collapse and compress and you could see what's happening. This person cannot support himself. Okay, so. One of the things that I noticed a while ago is that it's, this is not a linear system. Um, I have been through um, the rigors of, of the most linear chiropractic system and systems on the planet, okay, through, through the upper cervical world. It is by far the most linear look at the human body. It measures it in, you know, in you know, nanoseconds almost. You know, everything is, is, is very small pieces to it. And, but again, it's only a localized view. So this system is not just a bag of bones that's collapsing. It is a nervous system that's trying to stay upright. And this system we could agree on has had trauma. So the question is, where has it had trauma? Okay. The system also has a nervous system. So how is the nervous system responding? And is the nervous system responding appropriately? So we have to even step back and look at this system and say, okay, what is even normal? Okay, what is normal in an, in an anatomical way? Just somebody standing up on straight. Okay, we have, you know, a nice frontal plane and we have these sagittal curves. Well, how does that system even work? And then after that happens to have a conversation of if we have trauma and where we have it from head to toe, how does the body respond? And, and I put that question to anybody out here. If I have a trauma into the right side, into the pelvis, okay, how would the body respond? <laughs> it's a great question. How would the spine respond if it was into the pelvis? What is normal? How would the shoulders respond? How would the neck respond? How would the head respond? Okay, so there are normals to trauma. And that's the stop language that we have to start looking at. And it's already happening because uh, that, that's what this group is dedicated to, is trying to understand a different operating system of more than 250 plus techniques, just noticing the trouble that it's having. And to start understanding that this system 
at a current level in the biostructural world is used, is, is, is looked at, and is, 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 looked at observed. is observed. I'm going to turn I'm some, gonna some, some, uh, some uh, volume. volume. Uh, uh, here we go. Okay, it was, Dr. Smith, I had to turn you off. You were echoing on me. Okay, so, so this system right here is not a, a pile of bones, and that's really the way that we see it. We're not, we're not a spine and a bony system holding ourselves up. We're a dual system of fascia and bony structure, and the fascial system is expanding. It's called the tensegral unit. Everybody on this, everybody on this call knows about that, okay? So the human body, just push into your stomach. You'll see it pushes out. Why? Because it has a pressure inside it. So if it has a pressure inside, it has a balloon capacity. And, and the reason it does that is because of the design of the fascial system and the way it's connected to the bony system. It's created in such a way that it actually is expanding outward. And that's a great thing for us because we have a stability system in the frontal plane that makes us nice and strong. And we have a sagittal bounce with the three curves like a leaf spring connecting a system fascially from head to toe and an osseous system that gives us form and dexterity. So we're like this bouncing stable system until one thing happens, that, and that's trauma. And once trauma happens, the body starts responding. And how does it respond? it starts bringing the head upright. How does it do that? We'll talk about it another day. But we all know that. It's called proprioceptive system, okay? So the head, the atlas, C2, and the neck are all what? They are compensatory, uh, compensatory structures that, that oscillate on top of the pelvic platform when it's knocked down, okay? And my purpose tonight is to talk to you about only one thing that I try to do, and that is to find a release system. And I use the word release because it's a spring system. It's a bouncing system. Okay, bend your finger back and hold it down and then move, the finger, move your finger out of the way that's holding it. You'll see it bounces. Well, the human body is to bounce. So we don't have to push it. We don't have to force it. We need to understand this as a, in a three-dimensional way, how it's breaking down and understand from the cervical area uh, which we'll talk about, you know, at, in the class as well, is from the cervical area how to release this thing so it can lift back up and be open, we call it. And when it's open and it untwists, guess what happens? We free innate. Innate intelligence can then start organizing this thing into an integritous and stable, balanced structure. And I use those words specifically because they have definition to SM3. Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about the release system. Any questions on what I just said? Except that that's cool. It is. It's cool. I mean, because I, I can look at somebody, look at this person, and I, what I see is I see a right low pelvis and damage from left to right. I see the body responding up in the shoulder area over here. As these muscles are pulling this way to hold the person from falling over that way. Okay? You can see the bends where the twists are. Okay? The rotation in it, which is, this is right down here, is, is what we call a postural listing for QSM3. And they are uh, structures of the body that denote you know, uh, certain things, and we look at the certain relationships and so forth and so on. And one of the huge things that you'll notice is that I pointed out is the difference between that distance and this distance is quite considerable on that side. Okay. So there's a lot of rotation in the body. Okay. And we measure that rotation. And this person is compressing severely. You can see it in this bend here. That is a big bend. The bigger the bend, the bigger the fall. Okay, so this person has a configuration, all these R's and L's. It has a weight differential of 26 pounds more on the right, and the compression of the human body is collapsing it at 17 and 22 millimeters. Okay, 
And I can look at that and say, I understand how the structure and the structure and the neurology are working, where the stress is. Is that person in a uh, deep pile of trouble energetically? You know, are you carrying a five pound suitcase and walking on two legs or are you carrying a 50 pound suitcase standing on a toe with an arm out? OK, so I can we can look at these postural listings and determine those things. So chiropractic has advanced, my friends. And to be able to look at this in a global, structural, neurologic, gravitational field way over time in a configuration in a normal 10 Segre model and trying to restore it and watching and being able to measure it, it's, it's arrived, okay? And understanding how to start releasing it is to start understanding the neurology and the structure, okay? And the human body is traumatized, and there's really no structure to me, okay? Because all it is is neurology after that. It is constantly modulating to sustain itself from internal and external stimulus, okay? Using the least amount of energetic value, okay? And it does that structurally, and that's important for us, is by putting that head on top, okay? So the top should always oppose the bottom. And you can see that that's trying to do that here. It's coming off the right side. It's dropping down. The shoulders are bent. And this guy's bending back to the left. So it's trying to. It can't do it enough. You can see the shoulders, okay? And this thing is not on vertical. Here's vertical over here from L5. It's all the way over here. How about I erase some of these things? Yeah, so these are the things that I see now. Okay, and I can have a conversation with somebody in detail of how significant the trouble is. So this, this guy right here has had trauma and the right pelvis has fallen down. It has tried to recover by turning itself back. Okay, and it does that by turning that shoulder platform. And you see that here. And it can't do it well enough because the head and the neck are bending. And shouldn't be doing that. Those are biomechanics we'll learn if you don't know them yet. All right. So the system and so the system can't sustain itself under gravity in this kind of position. So it keeps breaking down and collapsing. So the young fellow has um, seizures. He has cluster seizures around before he saw me around four times a week. He's got right hip pain. Cognition is off. Um, he wets his bed and, um, what else does he have? I think that's about it that I could tell you. So, um, so anyway is, you know, we start working on him and it's where I used to just look at say a bone out of place is I, I now look at a three dimensional system and a measurable measuring system that, that, that uh, is able to start opening the person up and, and, and releasing that fascial system so that the integral body can can get restored and the cool thing that happens is once we start opening the system up and we do that three-dimensionally the whole body has to release as a unit it needs to unwind no different than a nail that's bent up in a piece of wood to twist it out you would have to twist it out as one thing okay you can't just start bouncing on it okay so there's a great amount of information to look at this and i look at and all I do is I look at innate intelligence, the structure of the body, uh, how I input it, how it's trying to help itself. And, I, and then I start doing things to it, and I watch how it responds. So as a chiropractor, I used to put force into the body. I don't put force into the body anymore. I put power into the body so it can do what it's made to do. Okay? And if we can, if we can kind of put that power into the body of our patients that resonates with them and flows with them as well as possible. And what I mean by that, in the, through the articulations of this, these bends three-dimensionally, then guess what happens is then we are able to lift them up and out. Their energy is restored and standing up against posture is the largest energy user. And your immune system and our eyes and our cardiovascular system and all systems and all pieces of the body use energy from one place, okay? And that is from the nervous system. 
Okay, so if uh, if if we have an ability to take the largest stressor off the body, okay, I mean, you know, Donald Ingram, big dog, microbiologist, PhD, MD, Weiss Institute, says that the breakdown of tensegrity affects us at a chemical level. Okay, so if we could actually show that we can change this tensegrally and open it and change the pressure within it and change the stress that's within it and lift it and open it, then um, I think we're talking about something at, not at a, just at a global human level, but at a, at, a, at a global level for chiropractic. Okay, so one of the first things that you have to do is if you want to try to understand how to unwind it, is you have to look at it. <laughs> you have to look at it. It's so funny. I say to my patients all the time, you know, they get, they go to, they somebody's got, let's say they got sciatica. And I said to them, did the doctor look at it at, at you? They said, no. I said, well, what did he do to you? You know, well, you know, he, you know, he asked me what was going on and he took an x-ray or something and he, you know, gave me a pill. Okay. And he said, come back in X amount of time. If it gets worse, you know, we'll send you off to somewhere else, you know. That kind of conversation. Okay. So one of the things that, that I like to do is I just like to look at people and just see what's going on. Just look at that for a moment. Okay. And think about how you would want to release that. Okay. Now you only get to touch it though from the top. Okay. That's a rule. And I'll, uh, there, there's a rule. There's a reason for the rule. Okay. And we'll go, go through that another day, but I want you to look at, because I don't want you to go, well, I'm just going to give it a push over here and push over there and push over here. Because understanding how this thing moves three-dimensionally and also as one unit means that it needs to move as one unit. There is nothing separate here. Okay, so we have to look at this thing as a, you know, a closed kinetic chain. So upper cervically, what, what, you know, from, a, from a cervical point of view, what would you, what would you do here? You know, just like a string that has fallen, you would lift it from the top. Just like a puppet that, that you know, that has fallen, you would lift from the top. That's, what, that's, that's the way puppet strings work. Same thing with the human body. It's been collapsing under gravity, the largest stressor of the human body. It's had trauma. It's trying to respond. Energetically, this person is out of gas. Okay. So what would you do as the structural expert on the planet. And that first starts by taking a peek at it. Okay. So what is, what does anybody have to say about that? You could cheat if you know the answer. You, if you, like Brad, you've been on the call every time for the last 40 years, you know, you want to lift yeah. it up from left to right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so, so we, so one of the things that we look at and it makes sense to me is, you know, just, just, I'm going to try to get some arrows here is, you know, if, if I push this here, this way, you guys see that this is my right side here. You see that right marker above what I just made here. Okay. So if I push this right to left, what would that do to that? That would just bend that thing right over. Okay. So one of the things that I would do is I would come in this way. Okay. And lift that thing. I to S. Okay. Left to right. And I say lift, but I don't lift because I don't lift the bones. I release the facile system that has spring in it. Okay, everybody's got some spring. We just got to we just got to we just got to release it for them. Okay. So then, what would you do if you, if you flop, flop this side, side right over? Right over. Side, side over. Oh, that's that's, 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 that's that's Andy again. again. Okay. okay. There you go. Hey, yeah. Russell White. We'll go on the left side on that. Say that again. Why are you on the left side on that? To open, open because I would because open, I would this, open this bend, bend up, up first. First, okay. And we'll talk and about we'll talk that, about a, little that a little bit later. I'm just talking I'm about, just talking if, about if, if if you look, if you at, look this at this from a non chiropractic point of view, point of view how, would you, how would you how would you how would you kind of try to send, try to get this balance get this balance? Gotcha. Okay. And Andy, I got to turn you off because you're just bouncing in my ears when I talk. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Perfect. I'm sorry, guys, about that. All right. So the, I, 
from this is from a non chiropractic perspective, just looking at it, you know, what would you think you should do to this thing? Okay, it's tough. I mean, you got two things going in opposing directions. Figure that. <laughs> structure, function, structure, function. Okay, that's all you're going to see. Only you're not going to see two of them. You're going to see three of them and four of them and five of them. Okay, these bends all over the place because that's what we see. Okay. So just looking at somebody is a great benefit to start seeing the flow of the way the person has been breaking down. Where's the pelvis? Where's the spine? How is it trying to compensate itself by bringing the shoulders, neck, and head up on top? Okay. So to start doing that, um, you have to understand that this is a postural listing and that the writing reflex brings us up top, okay? And in, in our bodies, I'm just going to go back for a moment and, and look at this, but these four letters right here, okay, the R, the R, the R, and the L in our postural listing, you know, a lot of, you know, they are the postural movers. Okay, these two over here, the neck and the head, are non-postural movers. Go ahead and move your head back and forth. Move your neck, bend your head down. You can bend your head down and not move past C7 if you decide to, okay, to a point. Go ahead and try to move your shoulders and see if you don't pivot L5. You cannot move your shoulders without moving L5. So your shoulders, okay, and your pelvis are intimately connected. And the reason that they are is that is the big posture stuff right there. Okay. So if I'm just going to go back to this picture, they changed the format on this. So I'm a little bouncy here trying to figure out where stuff is. Sorry about that. Um, so um, this stuff down here, okay, right here, the, the pelvis and the legs, and the spine and the shoulders, those are the four pieces really that control posture, meaning where the person's going to stand. It's only when those fail do the head and the neck actually have to, have to get involved. It's a secondary backup system, okay, to get the eyes on the horizon. If in this picture the shoulders balance the person out, okay, then the head and neck would not have to sit tilted, sit tilted the way they are, okay? Because the shoulder platform would have brought the head and neck up on its own, okay? So the head and neck are only used as, um, as uh, a secondary backup system to make sure that the eyes are on the horizon proprioceptively. The whole thing is a proprioceptive system, but the proprioceptive system that modulates the posture is shoulders down. And then the secondary system, like I said, is the one that that uh, the neck and head help it that way okay it's failing and that you see that plenty plenty you see that in upper cervical otherwise everybody would have a nice straight head neck okay so if that's the case there's um with four variables there's um there's basically 20 patterns okay um that are 10 rights and 10 lefts that we're going to look at in atlanta that are all variables of these. We'll see them tonight, but we're not going to go into detail of those, okay? And with that being said, if we want to be able to look at these four, I guess we're going to see them now, okay, is we're going to look at these four things and see how the body is structurally and neurologically handling itself, okay? And if everything is leaning to the right, like in number two, it's not doing a good job, is it? It's not doing a good job if three of the things are leaning to the right and only one thing is leaning back to the left, maybe. Okay. What happens if it's all over the board like this? You got your pelvis is right, your spine is left. And that what I mean by that, when we these these letters denote they are low to the floor. Okay, they're close to the floor. So this is this first letter is a right low hip. Why do we look at the low side? Because grandma always falls down, guys. Grandma never goes up. Gravity always goes down. So the problem is always the downside. Okay? That's the side that's fascially collapsing. 
okay, and shortening. We call it short tension, all right? So these configurations are 10 patterns on one, one side and 10 patterns on another side. And if you're a math person, you tend to go, hmm, that's interesting because 10 is a complete unit, okay? So when you find patterns that have base tens in them, ones and zeros and tens, you know you may be onto a full circle, okay? So I've been doing this for 10 years, which is funny in itself, okay? So I did about 13, 14 years of, uh, you know, all chiropractic and then, you know, tried to become a master of the upper cervical world. And then I walked away and started asking questions and it's taken me 10 years to where we're having a conversation now. So I look at those four letters and want to determine what the release pattern is. And I can look at all four of those letters and know what's going on in a patient in their configuration. And I know where they are failing, where they've been damaged structurally, where they are neurologically trying to respond, where they are neurologically unable to respond, respond because they're energetically weak and how the body is maybe degenerating further into other patterns because a lot of these patterns are related. Okay, they're just one degeneration after another, one trauma and then degeneration. We'll see that in a minute as well. So these are the patterns, okay? And I look at those patterns, and what I try to do is I try to look at the cycle of the way that the body has been traumatized, the neurology, all the multiple places, the multiple times, the weak and the collapse, and so the weakness and the collapse. And then I look at this thing, and I say, okay, what is the lowest structure here? Okay that is um, damaged. And what's, what's, what do you see as the lowest structure that's damaged? Pelvis. The pel pelvis, that's a fair answer. Okay, so the pelvis is on the right. Okay, and if you could determine what's on the right, you know the structure, then what's the guy that's trying to hold the whole thing up? It's the left shoulder is trying to hold this up. And there's, you know, there's going to be a huge amount of energy that's coming across this thing trying to hold this guy up okay from collapsing fair enough yeah it's unbelievable and from falling forward you know grandma doesn't just fall down grandma falls forward so this person is not just collapsing down on the left side okay he's also falling forward so we have all these muscles trying to hold him up across and posterior and what happens is they go to the medical doctor, they complain of whatever those syndromes are. If it goes on long enough, there's multiple trigger points. They call it fibromyalgia. The body is collapsing, so the pressure on the body is increasing and blood pressure issues start going up. If the person is active or even not active, this kid's 24, he's, he's not running around because he has mental issues. He's not been playing football. He sits at best and hangs out, okay, so he's not jumping on it. Okay, and his right hip's hurting. So we get all these markers from innate intelligence to tell us, tell us there's something wrong. Okay, and this person has been damaged. The right side is falling down, and the left side neurologically is trying to hold them up. So the lowest structure is the right hip, and neurologically is the lowest neurology is left. And I don't care what it is. We, we will have that conversation because we'll have big understanding. But tonight, I want to know that those two letters okay and it gets complicated it's not simple to look at it here and i could don't even need an x-ray okay I, I take x-rays in my office but i don't need an x-ray i have a posture iq okay which is a measuring device that we use that measures you know the person so we can look at them on the outside and get some empirical data and check them on a whatever you know i see people at first once a week so, and I check and I watch these numbers change. You know, I watch the, the body lift up and open. I watch it start integrating and balancing and start hopefully become sustainable. And I watch symptoms change. I see things that don't change. I see, see things that do change. And I say, and then I see areas that don't change. It's cool because you start seeing localized issues that you may have to address from the cervical area. So it becomes just a very fascinating, very deep conversation that you start looking at these things. And uh, I think it's just uh, an amazing thing for, for chiropractic and my patients to be able to uh, 
look at people this way and help them to the magnitude that we do right now. Okay. So this is important here. And this is what we see. Okay. So the protocol first is to lift out the neurology. So the neurology was what? Okay. The neurology, oops, sorry. The neurology was the left side. Okay. So I'm going to start on the left side. Why do I start on the left side? Andy Smith wants to know why I start on the left side. And the reason I start on the left side is simple. First of all, um, it works best. Okay. And how do I know that? Because that's what I noticed because I did stuff because I didn't just do something. I, I started doing things and I started watching patterns. And if you look at patterns long enough, you know, you start seeing, you know, uh, or you look at episodes long enough, you start seeing patterns. And I noticed that when I released the neurologic side, it helped people better. So I started saying, okay, why is that the case? And to me, I have some answers. And, and one of the best answers I have is that if this person is falling over to the right side, see, if this left side here wasn't holding this upright, this whole thing would fall over, yes? For sure, it would fall over, okay? So the left side, to me, needs to be activated to equal or be greater than all the gravitational stress on this side that's falling over and downward. That is bigger energy, okay? And my game is, is that you have to release both things all the time. You have to release anterior, you have to release posterior. There's no more releasing anterior. You have to release tension, you have to release compression. You have to release tension, short tension, you have to release long tension, okay? So I decided, you know, that I, I just, what I, and what I see is that I release the, the, the strong side, the largest tension. That's the one that I want to pop, okay? If you want to break the chain, you want to pop the biggest tension, not the littlest tension. I want to go global. So I start with the neurology side first, okay? So that's what I do. And I release this person um, left side up first, okay? And the algorithm says to release him structure sex second. So I release him left side first and then right side first. Okay. Now that being said, let's see where we're going with this. Any questions? Great. Anything? It makes total sense the way you explained it, that it's fatiguing. So you're releasing the side that's fatigued to make it stronger. In the case of releasing left on this case, even yeah, though releasing right, you're releasing the body couldn't handle. So it went left. So you're bolstering that side first to give that more more uh, of an ability to compensate? Uh, Brad, I would not agree with the way you said that. Okay. I would not. So I want to back up and, and explain this side, the energy, the musculature that is going into this person on the left side is bigger than the right side. Otherwise, the person would be falling down at a very fast rate. Yes. If yes. This, if this side could not sustain holding this up, it, the person you would stand up, you would fall down. If it couldn't handle it, couldn't handle it. Russell, in this yeah. case, couldn't you call it the stabilizer? The neurology is stabilizing the body yeah. there. Yeah. Well, that's what well, it is. It compensates. Absolutely. Yeah. So that tension is the biggest tension. Okay. And if you're gonna if you're gonna break something loose, okay. I mean, if you've got a tug of war. OK, and you've got five guys on either side and, and nine of the guys weigh 100 pounds. OK, and one of the guys is 300 pounds. Who are you going to knock out? Who do you want to take down first? It's simple. You've got to knock out the biggest energy user. OK, and then I'm going to tell you that's what that's what works anyway. OK, so. So, uh, <laughs> you know, the neurology will not release on its own 
without um, without a little time. So you sometimes have to take it out out of the game first. Okay, that's why people have go into like an antalgic lean. You can release it, release it, release it. It will come off because the purse, the body, the neurology of the body is extremely stubborn. And this is a pattern that's been going on in this kid for 24 years. So you're not going to break that pattern right off the bat by just pushing this person or releasing it upward. Okay. This neurology, I see that never just releasing on its own. Okay. There are exceptions. And I'll say there's only exception based on this. Okay. So there are no exceptions. It's just bigger understanding of the posture listing. All right. So let's not get, let's get off track. Okay. I'm sorry, because I'm probably eating some of you up here, but um, the neurology is what you have to look at. And I, and I, and you kind of, the idea is, you know, finding the V, okay. Finding the lowest V and you look for the lowest structure. And if you could find the lowest structure, you could find the neurology. It's pretty simple because they have to oppose each other. Okay. Or assume what the neurology is. Okay. And that starts by looking at the flow. That starts by looking at these numbers here and, and, and understanding these numbers just through a class course, understanding how this person is degenerating, which is looking at these numbers in the middle, understanding how it's more trauma, which is understanding this configuration and understanding that this third letter in its shoulder should be left. Okay. And understanding that the body takes care of itself kind of bottom up. Okay. So what happens is at the bottom, the structure is going to respond above it. It's very simple. If you push your shoulders over and keep it there, the neck and the head are going to turn it over. If you push somebody at their spine, the shoulder and neck and the head and the head are going to come up. If you push somebody at the pelvis, the spine, the shoulders, the neck and the head are going to turn and oppose. Okay. So we can look at that and look at these pictures and look at these relationships and, and become postural experts at understanding body biomechanics, understanding how it's broken down and stressed. And then now what we're talking about is, is well into the middle of the puzzle of how to, um, now that we see those things, is how do we go ahead and release them? And I release neurology and structure and looking at them and seeing which one is the neurology and the structure is the name of the game. So we're going to go through a few cases. Okay. So these are my patients. Okay. I wrote this, this after work today. I, I grabbed five patients off my screen. I just took their pre um, full spines and I took their initial listing and I wrote down what I did. Okay. There's no post because that's not what we're talking about here. But just, just take a look at this person, okay? This lady is a great patient. She has probably been a patient for about, uh, I don't know, three, four months, something like that, and uh, has seen a number of people for real just, you know, structural osseous joint muscle syndrome, musculoskeletal stuff. And uh, she's got some interesting stuff going on, okay? She's got... Um, a, uh, if you look at it, just take a look at that picture and forget the postural listing for a moment. First of all, do you see a nice flowing pattern? Anyone? Does it look so that's, that's low hip and the right shoulders compensating in the neck and head? So yes, it's a good it's a good compensation. It's a good compensation. So you think, Brad, I'm going to eat you up today. <laughs> so you, 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 so you Brad, look at that head and neck. That head and neck is jammed off there, man. I look at this. Look at this. Look at all this. Look at all these sections here. It's wiggling all the way through this thing. I mean, this thing, look at this pelvis is here, and the shoulders should be here, and what should happen in between should be this. This kind of thing, so to speak. And then these guys, if this tilts, if that shoulder tilts enough, this head and neck should be sitting right up on top. They shouldn't have to be doing a thing. If they are, they're doing a, a millimeter's worth of work. Because the shoulder, go and tilt your shoulders. That's the stuff that's supposed to do it. Okay? So, so what's going on here? Okay. So, so Andy is right, you know, he sees these jams through here. This person's jammed up. 
and she has musculoskeletal all the way through her whole body, and this whole thing's jammed up. Her shoulders, her neck, everything's all messed up. Okay, and you can just look at that and see that you know after a while you just start looking at these pictures. You start understanding the way that the body hasn't responded. And the reason that people have difficulty with that is for one reason only. It's because we never taught it. We don't, we don't do that in chiropractic school. We don't look at the flow of the human body. We say it's got a nervous system that sits over here in the subluxation conversation. We have a x-ray class that teaches this. We have a heat and an instrumentation class that teaches that. Okay, we have an anatomy class that gets us to name every structure from here to there, a physiology class that never talks the physiology. I, I could talk about the physiology of a kidney with somebody in chiropractic school, but I can't talk about the physiology of the, a, the human posture. There's something wrong with that, my friends. Okay. Well, that is changing. Okay. This person has a left pelvis and a a left spine leaning off, fixed point, okay? Their weight is jammed to their right. I mean, guys, it, this, is, this is the spine, the pelvis, and everything down. That's this portion right here over two of these things. Everything else is above that. 80% of the body is sitting on the left side, and the person has weight on the right. Something isn't working right. Think of the force that has been taken to have 80% of the body on the left side, yet they have weight on the right side. Think of the pressure that that person is moving. Do that to your car right there with those little wiggles in it. It wouldn't move the parking lot. And it's amazing that the human body, it's, the, it's unbelievable, this system. It just keeps on grinding. And you just keep on going and going and going and keep on going and burning it up. And we just keep putting more pills in it. Look at it. It is collapsing at an 11 and a 7 in the middle. Anything over 10 is, is, is collapsed. This person is walking in like eight inches shorter. I'm exaggerating. I'm giving you an idea. Okay. The head and the neck are just bending over in compression, just torque it over just to try to get the glabella over the L5 over here because it's not that was the best linear line I could draw <laughs> okay but the only way it can do that because this VP over here is not sitting over L5 so that head and neck have to bend over and it's doing everything it can and you know what? This is this picture is the best innate intelligence can do because innate intelligence does 100% all the time too. It may not be perfect, but it's 100% perfect given the energy system and the traumas and the neurology and every single thing, the vaccinations, everything in this body is, and its energetic stat, um, quotient. Okay, that's the, what that's what it looks like today. Okay. So I look at this thing and I say, okay, where's the V? What's the lowest tilt? Brad, what's the lowest tilt here? Pelvis. Pelvis. Low pelvis. Everything else right here is trying to get me over to the right. There's the neurology. What's the release? Right, right, left. Simple as it gets. All right, say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Huh. Okay. All right, here's my friend Stacy. Okay, so Stacy's a cool lady. Stacy's father-in-law was in yesterday. He's a patient about six months. He came in, big low back troubles, big troubles, barely walking. Um, within three days was cooking. His wife started up care. She sent in the daughter. The daughter sent in the husband. The, the mom, who this is also, the daughter you call is now the daughter comes for headaches. Boom, 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 boom. Five of them within three months. That's chiropractic. That's chiropractic selling chiropractic.
That's not what we're doing today, my friends. We are not selling chiropractic. Okay. We're selling, we're selling deals. That's why everybody's practice management. I'm not. This is my practice management. It's chiropractic. It's the greatest thing on the planet. Structure dictates function. We have to change the structure. The human body functions better. We have the largest structure. We deal with it. Us. I don't understand why we gave that away. Okay. Stacy has a horrible shoulder bad. She gets neck pain. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. This shoulder is dropped. This pelvis drops. Okay. This shoulder pulls back. All right. It's not enough. Look at the bend in the neck there. I'm going to erase that now. Take a look at it. See what it's trying to do. That bend in that neck is considerable. Look, the neck is a very short distance. Look at the bend in that. The brain stem. Look at the head is tilting to the right also. Trying to get, why is that happening? Why did this go to the right? This is going to the right. Drop down. This went to the left. Why is that going back to the right now? Well, it must be responding to something on the left. Okay, well, which means the shoulder has probably been jammed in. So this person went left. This guy went right. Uh, this, excuse me, this, this pelvis went right. This shoulder compensated left. It's been collapsing down over time or it had more trauma. So now the head and neck have to bend back the other way. Kind of like this. Boom. And instead of the, the shoulder bringing it up the center, the shoulder has did that at one time. It's been collapsing, and now the head and neck have to turn back a little bit, and that's what we see. So now we see trauma, compensation, trauma, compensation. And if you're seeing this for the first time, don't get freaked out like it's too much because it's really simple. It actually makes sense. So now we start understanding what's standing in front of us. We do it visually on a posture IQ. With empirical data, it's a cool machine. It's the only machine really that measures structure. And it could be cooler. It's just expensive, you know. So um, understanding the flow, you see it. Understanding why it's doing what it's doing, not just looking at what is. Understanding the postural listing right here at a level of structure, function, gravity, energetic usage, and time biomechanics, stress points, biomechanic abnormals. That's to me the chiropractic language. Not this bone is out of place and that's three millimeters here and two millimeters there. We gotta have empirical data, but we have to have a system that's alive. Okay, so anyway, um, I adjust her as a left right. Okay, that's what I was doing. And it was doing just fine and just fine. And, and uh, that shoulder wasn't coming up. And, and I decided to make a decision for, for whatever reason. Now I just adjust her left side up. Okay, for now. Okay, and there's a reason for that. And we'll talk about that in post-X-ray um, in Atlanta if you're, if you're coming. Okay, so next one. I'm just going to do a couple more things. Okay, so this is Beverly. Take a look at Beverly. See what you see. Look at the lowest point. Look at the damage. Look at the body's trying to pull itself back. Look at the shoulder platform to the pelvic platform. Watch the flow. So let me ask Madison. Madison, you with me? Yep. Amen. All right. So check this out. So the writing reflex should be able to take, say, the glabella or C1, the center of the brain stem, the neural canal, okay, one of those things and put it over L5, S1, something to that effect. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. Is that happening? No. No. It's failing right here. Yeah. You yep. see the distance there? Okay, so, so this left shoulder, 
that's tr and this left side that's trying to hold her up from falling over. Look at that. Oh, darn. No, it just doesn't write on x-ray as well. It's falling this way, right? You see that? Yeah. It's falling off to the right. The shoulder and this musculature is no, no longer able to handle that. And you see the cervical spine and the glabellar are all off to the right. Okay, you see this big bend in here. Yeah? Yeah, so this person's having a lot of stress. She is not energetically sound. She sits off 27 pounds. I have adjusted her. I'm guessing uh, three... 10 times, 12 times, okay? The rotation decreases on her. Sorry. This rotation decreases on her, but I cannot get her past maybe 12 pounds. And she, then she just falls back out. It's a problem. Look at this energy system in this person. She's sick, isn't she? She's energetically weak, okay? I can release it up. This system is failing down. Look at that big bend in there. She's on all kinds of pills, all kinds of anti-inflammatories, all kinds of pain meds, all kinds of heart stuff. Can't under understand why. Look at the volume just in her thoracic and abdomen. The whole cavity, pelvis to shoulder. So what is it? How, how much has it fallen down? Is it fallen an inch? That heart, that lung, everything in there is being compressed. Okay, so what happens is, where is the neurology and where is the structure? Okay, so every single thing here is leaning out to the right. Okay. So, where is the neurology? <laughs> right? Where's the neurology? Okay, so uh, that one we're going to table till uh, Atlanta. Because where's the neurology? It's like it's not working. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't think her neck is holding her up. And maybe that's, that's the last resort. That neck is going left. Nothing's working here, though. Okay, so this, the system's in, in critical condition. It's, it's in failure. Okay, the, the neurology is working, but there's other things going on here. And uh, we're going to talk about um, some different types of breakdowns in Atlanta on this type of pattern, okay, where you see all these things are either all right here. Quick question. Okay. Yes, sir. What should be? Should that be the left side compensating if it was the proper neurology? Well, it is. It is the proper neurology. Okay. Just not it, doing it enough. Is, no, it's, it's just a whole other thing that, that uh, we're going to look at. Okay. Thank okay, you. We're going to look at, we're going to look at something. Okay. I mean, we're, Brad, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the legs. Okay. Because we're just talking about pelvis up to here. Okay. There's this legs are sitting down here. Okay. And, and her legs sit like that, like uh, this. So those legs, this whole thing is originally compensation for that. See what I'm showing you? Can you, you guys see this stuff? That yeah, I can off? see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So, but uh, I would never adjust her on the left side here right now. I mean, I, I did that a couple times and she went out to like 40 and 50 pounds. I mean, she can't, she's got no bounce. So it's like, you know, you know, I don't get, I don't get to use the integrity of the body as my helper. I, I literally have to kind of like grind it out with her <clears throat> and to me I told her she's a year of care just to get her out of the hole well you only knew that when you did it right and so it happened when you went left well, I looked at that I looked at her I knew it was going to be weak okay you know we're not the guys that do the job okay we, we're, we're the we're the facilitators but we're not the we're not the ones that make it happen okay you know that would be uh, the ego of the mind, and that ain't happening. Okay, we, we are the supporters. 
Okay, we we try to figure out how to support this, not fix this. We we support this. Okay, and we try to look at innate. I look at innate to understand what it wants after I do something to it, which is a huge piece of this. Okay. All right. So let's move on to case four. Okay. So so this is an interesting case also. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting case. So um, this person has had um, a relative. It's a relatively new patient. Um, I would say uh, six weeks. Okay. So what I did is I, I went to my Monday cards, and uh, uh, these were the people that that were coming in on Monday morning. So uh, I just uh, pulled their X-rays up. So uh, so so you can see what's going on here. Look at the just take a look at that for just a moment. Look at the relationship between the pelvis and the shoulder. Look at the relationship of L5, L4, and the pelvis to L3, L2, L1. That's not flowing. Okay. This person has headaches. So I've adjusted her about maybe four or five times, and she's no headaches now for the past couple of weeks. Went out the first day because this is complicated, my friends. I just told you about a lady I've been working on for you know three four months, and <laughs> and it's a grind. And I could tell you about my 85-year-old lady that started it up about three weeks ago with back pain, chronic back pain, 10 years, and one adjustment, and it was gone before she walked out. And the daughter-in-law that was with her just started care. Okay. So what's going on here? Talk to me, somebody. Tell me what you see. Bartosh, tell me what you see. I see a lumbar collapse and everything else above it is trying to stabilize it. Yeah, I see that too. Yeah, I see. Yeah, well, I, see, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah, a massive, yeah. mad, there's a massive hip hip imbalance. Yeah, so yeah, I'm looking at the lowest structure. structure. The lowest the lowest structure. structure. Hip on the left? For sure. For sure, yeah. Yeah, and look at the look at the Okay. So so look at the flow of this thing. Again, it's not flowing as it should in a nice there's numbers that go with this curve and stuff like that and these these there's normals to this. Okay. So but uh this person has see and you can't see this from the X ray. If you looked at this at, on the next ray, where would you think the weight is on this person? On the left side. On the left side. Yeah, for sure. But it's not. It's 12 pounds. She's 12 pounds on the right. Right? So she's, how has that happened? She's got a left pelvis, a left spine. Again, 80% of her body. I made that number up, but it's probably reasonable. So it's worth it just at least for conversation. Okay, look how low the hip is. All right. And so so this left hip and this spine have been jammed over into the right frontal plane. Okay? This person weighs 140, 50, 150 pounds. Okay? And she with that low hip like that, should have 20 pounds on the left side. So she has, to me, at least a 30-pound compression into the right frontal plane. And you can't see that on an X-ray. That's You can only see that on the posture IQ or visually. So that's why you have to look at these things and not just – because an X-ray is only a uh, piece of plastic. It's linear. It doesn't show you the three dimensions. Okay. So you can't see the weight differential. All right. So 
this person has a left low hip and everything else is trying to compensate on its on the right side. Could you see how you would want to release the right side first? Okay. And open this thing. Let me just show you what that looks like. Could you see, just forget the what I'm telling you, uh, neurology first. You know, the structure is the left, neurology is the right. So you would adjust her um, right, left. Okay, at least that's what it looks like. And I took her as a left, right. Now. <laughs> okay. So why is it that when you look at the x-ray, and I would agree with Andy, I'd say, Andy, it looks like it's a right left. If I look at the listing, I mean, I could, I could make an argument that I could make it a right left. Okay. But it's not until you see the person on the posture I cut cue and visually that you realize that it's a left, right. Okay. Because this x-ray doesn't have the legs in it. And the legs are another component that can break down. All right. So there's three things that you need to practice and to be in chiropractic. Okay. Is you need your you need your eyeballs and you need a posture IQ. And if you can afford an X ray unit, it's a nice thing to have. Okay. Just because you get to see some of the smaller, not the global stuff, but the small kind of dents in the dents in the body. Okay. So these these uh, by the way, this is very simple to do. Okay, here's number five. Okay, so so here's the last one. All right. So um and this one has a little twist in it too. So this is my friend Ron. Okay. Uh Sean has been working on him diligently. Okay, and this this is uh Ron's pre. Ron is probably in his forties, early forties. Super active guy. Every time he's coming and going, he's either skiing or he's in a boat somewhere skiing, some water skiing. He's all about skiing something. Okay. And he's beat himself up and he's got chronic stuff going on um, in multiple problems. His wife is an attorney. She started up with chronic low back pain and he ended up coming in within two months. It's a good man. This is all good stuff, right? Yeah. And I don't like have a class. I don't have to tell them. They don't come and I don't have to meet them. And I, I don't, I don't say, Hey, send your kids in. I don't, we don't do those things. Okay. We don't do that. Okay. So, uh, and I'm glad I don't do that. Okay. But, uh, Ron's got some trouble. He's got a, uh, Take a peek at it. He's got a right low hip. He's got a spine that sits to the left. He's got a shoulder that's right. Those are some nice zigzags there. Right, left, right. Again, you know, it's a great question. You have to know what the true what the true biomechanics are of the way that the body's supposed to respond if you want to understand this picture. You can't just say the hip, the hip is low and the shoulder is low on the right and the spine is over here on the left and the neck is here and it's weight there and it doesn't matter, okay? It's the first thing that we're going to establish, you know, not here tonight, is what is normal, okay? And once you understand what normal is and the way that the body moves, then you understand that when it has damage, how it's supposed to respond. And then we can go from there and see what's failing or multiple traumas. And this right, left, right between the pelvis, the spine, and the shoulder is not okay. Okay. It is, not, it is a huge stress on his L5. Why don't you take a look at that? Do you see that stress on that L5 and that L4? Does everybody see that? Yeah, it's like you taking your your hand and bending it to one side, okay, and then take your finger and bend it the other way, okay? I mean, it's not made to do that. 
So these are the people that walk into your office and that say, no, it doesn't, does, I have low back pain. Oh, does it go down your, on, on which side is that? No, it's not on the side. It's right here. Okay. <laughs> That's these guys. Okay. It's right here, doc. And sometimes it does this. If it gets real bad. That's over time. That's the guy that has this non-integration. That's cool. Okay. So where's where's Ron's trauma here? And where's his structure and where's his function? Right hip and, and left uh right. Left fixed right. points coming the opposite way. Perfect. I see that. That's that's that's. I see that right here. Okay, at the bottom, right here. These two, that the hip goes right, and then the spine is compensating left. Okay. It's that when it bends like that, it shouldn't be doing that. It should be flowing back, like this, and it's not doing that. It's not curving. It's kinked in there. Okay, so I went in on this, and this is this is the last one I want to close on, and so because it's going to lead into the post. Okay, is his algorithm to adjust is left to right, and if you see there, I did that, and what I do is on any person, I check them on the posture IQ, probably eighty ninety percent of the time, unless they're an established patient and I know what their pattern's doing and they're in stability care. Okay, my 30-day people, 30 days, 30 days, 30 days. But on a person that I'm working on the first six months, once a week, that's what I do in my office, okay, and try to get consistency and stability until I get that. I pretty much um, try to figure out what it is that helps them, them the most, okay? And it's not just the algorithm because sometimes people can't handle stuff. So on the first go... I went ahead and I adjusted him. This is the first adjustment, okay? This is what I have written here, is I adjusted him on the left side, and then I was supposed to adjust him on the right. So I checked him on the left, and whatever it did, I don't know what it did. But I put him over, and I adjusted him on the right, and the whole thing fell apart, <laughs> okay? I mean, it got worse, okay? It doesn't mean that it got, it got worse than we started. He could have, he, that could have happened, too. Okay, the, the right could have gotten bigger, the rotations could have gotten bigger, whatever it is, we'll learn those things. But, but I knew that I couldn't leave him there based on what innate intelligence told me, okay, on the, on the, on the machine, okay, because it's telling me the way it's responding. It's live, and it tells me right away, okay? You know, just like you put your hand on the stove, the body reacts right away. I see right away what it likes, okay? I see is it opening, I see the way is the are, are the are the structures changing the configuration. I see is it lifting up and out of there. I can see I can see that I can see, see the the lift integrity, pre and post. I can see the weight shift. I can see if the weight is shifting in the direction that I'm releasing it. Okay, we put all this stuff together, and I said he's not in a good spot. And I said you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back and I'm going to adjust him on the left and I'm going to leave him there. And that's what happened. I adjusted him on the left. He, his, these numbers improved. Again, I don't have the post here. Okay, these numbers improved. Okay, and I said, okay, that's what I did for today. And off I go. And that's what I do on my first visit. Okay, is I pretty much hit it on both sides. Okay, kind of kick it out of the sand trap. And that's what I tell people. Some people over time or through some adjustments, that's what we'll learn after this is we're going to learn how to release it. Then we're going to learn how to adjust it and literally physically release it. <clears throat> we're going to watch the behavior on the posture IQ, and we're going to be able to see in real time uh, what innate intelligence, how it's reacting, and does it like it or does it not like it. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So the release sequence, um, as each pattern has a release sequence. And if you have some eyes and you don't have a posture IQ and you don't have an X-ray unit, you can start looking at posture three-dimensionally and be better off than where you are today for sure, I, I just with even without a posture IQ and without, um, without an X-ray unit. 
you can start looking at people um, after the class or if you're not coming to the class, to the next class or to the webinars or whatever we're doing here is, is you start engaging it and getting it. Okay, you'll start looking at people and you'll start doing it maybe even after the class and you just start looking at some of the people and start seeing what that is. And, you, and you'll be able to write a posture thing and then you'll be able to see the relationships and then you'll see what's breaking down and you'll be able to see what the structure is, what the function is. And that is what these things are. These are release sequences for, for each one of these. Okay. Okay. So I, I want to I want to talk to you about just a couple more things. <coughs> Excuse me, let me just get a drink here. Is um, if you notice that number um, two and three are very similar to number nine and ten, aren't they? By the way, the dashes and the X and the Y just means those are other numbers that we put in but we're looking at just the posture tonight. So those are those four letters. That's why I just left those blank. I didn't want to confuse the issue. Okay. So you'll see that one, uh, number two and three and nine and 10 are exactly the same. Okay. And the reason they're listed twice is because they don't come from the same trauma. So their structure and neurology are different and understanding posture at multiple levels will help us find the neurology, find the structure, find the best release sequence, find the most stable release of releasing this thing three-dimensionally so the human body can stand back up to basically its tensegral or more tensegral position where it has its bounce, its least energy output, and where it is filled with its life force and where it is able to have f much more three-dimensional motion. So where I used to try to put people up on center and orthogonal, now I try to lift people and create three-dimensional motion in the tensegral sphere, opening up the fascia and the osseous, um, using the osseous articulations of the human body and following those pathways. And it's magical. And that's why chiropractic has and everyone has practiced chiropractic has um, found miracles because if we put a force into the human body and we can change these postures and we can restore the body and the joints and the musculature and all the stuff that we talk about. I mean, look at that person. What do you, I mean, just that picture that I've been showing you all night, this picture, any of these pictures, I mean, what do you think the heart and the lungs are doing in there? They're in a smaller volume. That can't be good. You know? I mean, these are the things that we need to be talking with our people about. You know? I mean, look at these pictures. These guys go to other chiropractors, other therapists, and especially medical doctors. You know, every one of them goes to a medical doctor. Okay? And they're not even looking at this stuff. It's like we have the greatest gift and that we have just and we, we've just not been good keepers with okay so um it starts here in understanding the posture that we do okay so guys we're not a building and we basically have about 99 percent of our practice or chiropractic i really shouldn't even say that when i went to school 99 percent of chiropractic was structure okay it would move the bone I don't care what you did. I don't care if it was Mopal, SOT, Activator, Gonstead. It didn't matter. Drop, you're moving the bone. You had some other things that were you had AK and you had um, pretty much network. Okay, those are, that's not the case anymore. Okay, I mean, we basically have stepped out of chiropractic. Okay, and the reason that happened is because we have been looking at the body as a bone out of place and we are not a building. We're not mechanistic. We're a, a vitalistic system, okay, that has an energy system. We're not an algorithm, but we have to be able to have some language to start looking at this energetically, structurally, and try to integrate those two systems so that we can have a better understanding, so that we can do what I did here, okay, and I really shouldn't say I did here. The only thing that I do is try to help innate get free. That's what I do. 
so that it could do what it's supposed to do. And this is a kind of a cool picture because if you look at this picture, uh, let's see if I could just make it a little. Can you guys see that pretty well? You yes. guys see that pretty well? Yes. Okay, so just look at this. This is this is the kid that I was talking about. This is he's been in care. Um, it's about when I took the picture. Um, I saw him today. Um, this was last week. He, he's about 95 days in care. Okay, just a hair over three months. So look at his hip. Look at the hip change. Okay. The distance from the center of whatever vertebra that is to the center line of L5 has reduced by 24 millimeters. It would take 20 years to do that if you were an orthodontist with braces, 24 millimeters. That's like from one end of your mouth to the other. <laughs> okay, why? Because of tensegrity. Look at his shin in the first picture here. This is him unable to hold his head up. This is, you can see his neck here. Look at his head, how it's sitting straight. Look at how it's bent here. Look how L5 is on C7 and the odontoid, right off the odontoid. Look at it here. Okay. Look at the shoulder. The shoulder looks worse, though. It looks like it's dropping down. Maybe it is. Okay. So what I do on this guy is, first of all, what's the algorithm on this guy? Where's the structural problem? Anyone? Right. Who's talking, talking about it? Dennis. Dennis. Talk, to, Talk me. to me. Look at the lowest pick, lowest thing you see on the picture. What's the low point on it? Where's it low? On the right or the left? Dennis, you with me? Anybody? Right. Low on the right. Low on the right. Very nice. Low right. 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 And this all through here is trying to hold him up. And it's doing a pretty good job, right? Because he's 24. Yeah. But look at that bend. It's really falling down because it's so unstable. So he may be able to pull himself, you know, uh, right to left, but he is collapsing downward. And you can see that by how big this bend is. Okay. Well, that bend is coming out. All right. And his release is... To be left is the neurology. Here's the left side, the neurologic side. And the structural low side is the right side. So he's the left-right release. Every time I would release him right, left side, I would blow it out left side. This would open up. And every time I tried to turn him over and release him, the whole thing would collapse back down. How do I know? Because I have a posture IQ and it has certain data that tells me that. So that's for another day. So I stop doing right. So I only do the left. I write that as L, X, R, meaning the algorithm is L, R, but he can't handle the left side yet because every time I go in on this left side, boom, it falls over again. Ben can't handle it. So all I've been doing is going left, 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 and trying to open them, open him. There'll be a time where I will try to do left, right again. And who knows the answer why? You may be able to handle it better. Okay, no, okay, that's no, that's to re release the structural that's breakdown. That's Thank you. Thank you. And that, is, that is why. Because today he can handle me going on the right side, and the right side and this low hip is the cause of the whole problem. And I'm not saying get into the problem, but I have to, if you're going to fix a building, Okay, and the fifth floor is tilting. You have a five-story building, five-story building, and the 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 roof is tilting. Okay, and you look down, and the foundation is tilting. Also, you've got to change the foundation. You don't change the roof. Okay, it's the same idea here. You have to get to the lowest structure. 
So if I am only opening him and opening him and opening him, I am only releasing the neurology and I am not releasing the cause. Okay. So at some point I got to go to the right side, but I got to go there only when he can handle it. So what happens in the algorithm, I want to close with that, is when we look at people visually, we look at the flow, we look at them on the posture IQ, when we look at them in an x-ray, and we put that together, we make a decision on where the neurology is and where the structure is. And we do something to it. And there are times where the body says, thank you. And then it, you do something and it says, no, I don't like that. Sometimes you'll do something it doesn't like. And you go, I learned from that now. That isn't the neurology. That's the structure. Or you know what? It can't handle that. Or you know what? It's just too weak right now. Or there, there is a lot of beautiful information that we're going to get from the relationship between normal posture listing, posture IQ, and the release and the post, um, the post release. And that's the real time that we do is I used to walk down and take an x-ray and look at the neck, and now I see three-dimensionally how the body is responding at multiple levels, structurally and neurologically. And, I, and, and that's nice because I get to have a real-time conversation with patients you know, that, that goes beyond um, you have a head tilt, and that's why you have a headache maybe. Okay. Because I can try to get that head tilt out all day long, man. And if I just keep doing that, you know, at some point, you know, this person's going to have some trouble down here in their low back because it's not going to be able to handle it because I'm not going after the cause. And that head is only tilting because that low hip is 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 uh, a counter planer to it. Okay. So we are chiropractors, okay? And there's there's a there is a new um, operating system that looks at the human body three dimensionally um, at multiple levels, structure and neurology and gravity and time, and that is what we're talking about here. And the cool thing is is this doorway is so vast um, because this is not the answer. This is just this is just it's just another. It's just, it's, it's, you know, we're just, we're just starting to walk again, guys. We're not, we haven't been walking for a while. Okay. We're trying to sell our product, not have it sell itself. Okay. Well, that is going to change uh, God willing. Okay. So anyway, um, I, uh, are there any questions? Come on. Not a question. Russell, just one thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Uh, you didn't really talk about this, I don't think so, but the, I just want to make sure everyone knew that the RS meant release sequence on your on your uh, slides. Yes. yes. Yeah, right here it is, right here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dr. Opal. Dr. Opal. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing quite well. How are you? <laughs> Doing well. Super. Are you uh, are you uh, indulging in some of this? I'm I'm absorbing right now. I'm kind of sponging the moment. <laughs> okay, very good. Me too, man. All right, very good. All right. Well, I appreciate well, it. I look forward to seeing you in the next two weeks. Yes. Is that uh, first failure after trauma always going to be in the pelvis? No. No. Okay. No. 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 It's not. We're gonna. That's that's what. So when we understand, we're going to do a class on what normal biomechanics are, and we will look, look at like, uh, um, well, we're going to look at these in particular, okay, are damages below the pelvis, okay? But obviously, those things happen to the pelvis and the spine. It's just the biggest area. Okay, I'll have to chew on that one. Huh? Got it. Yeah, you, know, you we can have a conversation about the, the, the vulnerability of the head and neck, but uh, I, I generally don't see 
<coughs> a head trauma and the pelvis has to compensate. I, I've yet to see that. Okay. Mm. So it okay. has crossed my mind. I have looked at it because, you know, I come from an upper cervical world. So, you know, I thought that that was the area of most importance. And to me, it's, it's, it's not that it's unimportant. It's, it's, it's most important because of neurology. But it's, it's least important as far as structure and foundation. Okay. You know, and that's why, you know, we have people like, you know, B.J. Palmer. And then that's why we had people like Clarence Gonstead. Right, because nobody's right. wrong. It's just that nobody's because everybody goes, "Wow, man, this I move this and this helps, and and I move this and it helps." And yeah, because that's just because the body is, you know, is the grace of the human body. <coughs> so I believe that we are gravitational pe- um, beings, and that we have trauma, and that we have a writing reflex that compensates, um, not. Um, to what's above, it compensates to what's below because the writing reflex is about putting the head on top. And that's why we have those two proprioceptive beds to me in an anatomy at C1 and say L5S1. Got it. Okay. All right. So uh, I wish you well. I do this every single month. Um, if, if you guys would like to join the um, Facebook page. There are two small questions. One is, are you a chiropractor or a student? And uh, why do you want to join? Feel free. I post on it uh, a few times a week and so forth and so on. There's some videos and things like that. And we do the webinar and uh, feel free to uh, ask others to join us as well. Okay. My telephone number, if you ever want to reach out to me, is 770-378-6557. Because I just saw some new people on if you had some questions and maybe you were uncomfortable about answer, asking tonight. Okay, have a nice evening. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.